Hello, everybody. Everyone having a good conference so far? Glad that it's afternoon, almost beer time. I'm Eric Smalling. I am a solution architect at Docker. Been there for a couple months. That means I help our customers be happy with Docker. Um, that's pretty much my job. Um, today, we're going to talk about Docker images. How many out there have built a Docker image? That's what I expected. That's great. Um, one of the biggest problems, as you probably all know then, is your image sizes. When you build images, each layer of that image adds up. And we're going to talk about that a bit, building images with Jenkins. How many of you build your images in Jenkins? Okay, that's a good number. Impressive. Um, we're going to talk about the way people handle the image problem, what I call the old way, um, up until recently. Uh, there's a pattern that we actually have... Uh, popularized called the builder pattern that you may or may not have heard of. And we're going to talk about what the new multi-stage builds that we recently added to Docker can do for you and what I call it the new way. And of course, we'll have demos and talk about some resources for more info. So who am I? Why am I up here talking to you? Um, I told you where I work already. Um, I've been developing software professionally for about 25 years, give, give or take. Um, primarily Java, before that C, Python, whatever language is needed pretty much. I've been doing consulting for a little while, so you get to do whatever the client needs. I have a lot of experience in what we now call the devops -y things. I hate that term, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Puppet Ansible. Uh, version control, I've done a lot of version control work uh, consulting over the years um, and uh, branch strategy work with uh, large companies. Uh, the last 10 years, though, of my career has kind of circled around build and test automation, build tools for developers and, and helping uh, companies get their CI and CD pipelines uh, into shape. Um, primarily Jenkins, obviously, that's why we're, I'm talking here. Um, in fact, I've been to almost every Jenkins comp since number one. I think I've missed two of them over the years. Uh, so if you go to like seven years where the conferences, they let you stand up in front of a podium. Um, Done quite a bit of work in the past with Selenium and other uh, automated test frameworks like Fitness, SOAP UI, Puppet RSpec, things like that. Um, and I've been using Docker in one manner, in one manner or another since before it was 1.0, back when uh, it was in the wild, wild west days. So um, I also coordinate the Dallas-Fort Worth area Jenkins meetup, which um, if you're ever in the Dallas area, and look on meetup.com, and if we're having a meetup while you're out, please come by, say hi, we have a good time. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to do a little bit of a 101 on Docker images. This is probably a review for most of you, but for just for anyone in the room that doesn't know. Uh, Docker images are file system images that are built up as a series of layers. So in this example, you can see a fictitious setup that might be like Ubuntu 15.04, and the first layer is a 188 megabyte file system. Each layer after that represents changes from the prior ones. So the delta on this layer is 194K, and then 1.8K on this one, and then there's an empty layer, which probably is an environment variable or something else. Um, each of those layers are immutable, read-only. Um, they're referenced by hashes, and you can tag them optionally. And then when a container is run on top of that image, a thin read-write layer is applied to the top, plus any volumes you might mount into it. But the, uh, the only thing that can change is that thin read-write layer. And for those of you in the room who know, you can also run in complete read-only mode, but that's not in scope for what we're talking about. If you have multiple containers running on the same host that share the same image, they're going to share those that file system. Um, and again, everything's read-only except for that thin layer that makes up the container layer. In Jenkins, there's many ways to build images. These are the three usual ones. You may do it differently. That's great. But uh, you can have a simple shell step in a freestyle um, build where you're just doing Docker build and the arguments to, to uh, tag it. Uh, you, could be, you could be using the Docker plugin, the Docker build step plugin, and it provides, you know, build image is one of the things you can do, and it basically takes the same arguments. Or you may be, like most of us should be doing, be on the pipeline DSL. And one of the ways, other than just a shell script, you can do it, is you can use, if you're in the, the groovy DSL, you can do Docker build, pass it the tag, and you'll get an object that rep represents the image that was created. And if you were looking the logs of any of these, you'd see something along the lines of Docker build, the tag, st all the steps in the Docker file as it builds the layers, and finally, the uh, hash of the image you got and the tag. So, so I'll probably review for most of you. So image sizes. Got this uh, 
example application I've picked up from my Docker colleagues that we use sometimes to show image size. Uh, Dockercraft, not gonna run it, it's, but it, it is a, uh, a Minecraft server that visualizes your Docker infrastructure in the landscape of Minecraft, so you can attach a Minecraft game to it and go do things. <laughs> Don't have time to play it. Um, but <laughs> the, the, uh, as it stands, if you were to go pull that from GitHub, the master um, branch has an 838 megabyte size. Which may not sound big to you, but that's pretty fat. That's a lot of stuff. Um, and if you're doing an app that has a similar size in CI, building over and over and over, if the, if the size is in any of those layers that change as part of your build, your repositories that are holding your Docker images are gonna start fill, filling up fast. Not to mention, as you move that image around between your CI, CD systems, and your production servers, you gotta transport that to every host that hasn't cached those layers yet. So we really wanna try to get these image sizes as compressed as we can. So one of the things that is feeding the image size here is Golang. So the Golang image that everything is based on so 672 meg, but the server, this Dockercraft server, really only needs what's in Debian to run. It just needs Go to build. So if we just based ourselves on Debian Jesse, for instance, that's 123 meg, we've saved a half a gig right there. But how can we get rid of Golang? We need it, we gotta build the app, and we wanna do, we don't wanna have a, too complicated of a thing, so we wanna have a simple build. Well, you could use Jenkins build steps to do the construction of the workspace in Jenkins land and then use your Docker image to just pull in those artifacts. So that would look like something like Jenkins builds the thing, artifacts gets created, then your Docker file, file build just copies those artifacts in. There's supposed to be a little container image there, sorry. It's not presenting, but a small container then gets produced. That, you could do that, that's fine. Only problem with that is, well, now one of the points of using Docker or containers in general, is that your developers, you want them to be able to run the same container on their laptop or their workstation as eventually is gonna run in production, because you want a, apples to apples comparisons. And now you've got either a shell scripts or, or a make file or something that's being done differently on the developer side, then he's gonna be, then, then what's gonna be happening in Jenkins, or it just becomes complicated. So another thing you could do, and this is where I mentioned the builder pattern, you could take the Docker file and break it into two. So you have two Docker builds, one that actually constructs things. Oh, and I didn't mention on the other one. Also, you gotta make sure your developers have the right version to go on their workstations and all the things that have to be done to make sure it builds. In this case, that first Docker file ensures they have Golang, well, I think it's 171. So they don't have to worry about making sure they're building with the right version of Go because you know, most developers are trying the next greatest thing ahead of time and who knows if that's gonna run in production. The second Docker file, uh, and so Jenkins can then run both of these. Big build image gets created by the first one, and then Jenkins, again, my little container's not showing up, um, builds the second one by pulling artifacts out of the workspace that the first one built. And then you throw away that build container because you just don't need it. Now, a really old school way of doing this that a lot of you probably have seen if you've been around Jenkins for a while, if you're not on pipeline, you might have a freestyle job with build step, build step, build step, build step, and you're just copying files around in your workspace, or you might have job A triggers job B with the triggered pipeline and artifacts get pushed and pulled, and it starts to get really Rube Goldberg, and, but it's kind of job security because, you know. <laughs> Enough of this slides. Let's, let's take a look at uh, what I'm talking about here. So this is the Docker craft, let me, let me get on the right branch, sorry. Is that legible or do you need it bigger back there? Bigger? Better? Okay, so this is the Docker file for building this, it's very simple. Or, I'm sorry, the Jenkins file for building this. Uh, we just say Docker build and then I'm pushing to my personal repo, repo, uh, registry. That's not very interesting. Let's look at the Docker file itself. So here we are. Here, this is the original. We're depending on Golang here. That's where, again, that huge chunk of memory is, or space is being used. We're doing all the things necessary to, we actually, the, the, this application needs the Docker client to be able to talk to Docker to represent that 
landscape, right? So we're actually putting the Docker client in right there, uh, which is fine, no big deal. We download this Kubernetes server, which is a C++-based Minecraft server, apparently. And then we copy a few things from our uh, checkout into that and uh, do the go build right here, go install. And then finally, we just say, hey, run this start script whenever the container runs. That's a pretty standard Docker file. Um, let's take a look at, oops. If I go into the Dockercraft master build, and we'll kick that off. And I pre-cached everything because I don't trust conference Wi-Fi. Uh, so this should go pretty fast. Um, you'll see it's going out to get uh, GitHub and pulling stuff. It is doing the build, the Docker build right now is being kicked off. Let me grow that a bit. Oh, too much. So it's running through that task right now, and now it's pushing it up to my repository. Done. Okay, fine. The end of this, I'm spitting out some information so we can kind of see sizing. This was build number five, and the way I'm numbering my build here is master 105. That's an 838 meg image, just like my slide said. And you can look here, this is a Docker history. So if you ask Docker image history, it'll show you all of the layers that make up whatever you're asking about. And you can see all the things I just did, and then everything that says missing, that's the initial Golang and the, the layers that made it. So when you pull an image down from Docker Hub or wherever you're getting it from, they're not gonna show you the hashes of all of the layers that built it. That was a thing that changed about a year ago. But you can see all the hashes of the things I did to it, and you can see where the sizing is coming from on each layer. So we got 123 meg here, 123 there, you know, 100 here, 100 there, it adds up eventually, and we get the size. So that's that. So now if we come back, let's look at the builder pattern way of doing that, just for comparison. It helps if I'm in the right IntelliJ, sorry. So with the builder pattern, if we look at the Jenkins file first here, we have a stage called build, and this is going to do a Docker build, but you notice the second argument being passed to it where I'm saying, hey, use Docker file dash build. I've got a different Docker file for this. And we'll look at that first. Docker file build. Pretty much the first half of the Docker file you saw before, right? So we're, we're doing all the things, but we stop after the go install. So at that point, our image just has the built Kubernetes server. Go back to the Jenkins file. Then we're doing a Docker create, which is like Docker run, but it just creates a container. It doesn't actually start it up. For the sole purpose of, I'm just clearing out a directory, making sure I have a clean uh, local directory, I'm just using Docker CP from the build container to pull my artifacts out to my Jenkins workspace folder. And then I blow away that container that I just built because I, I don't want it. It's, so it serves me no purpose anymore. Then I do Docker create, which is the same kind of thing, Docker build, but I'm using a different Docker file, Docker file image. And you can probably guess what's in here. It's the second half of things. But we're based on DB and Jesse now instead of Golang. Copy in all the things that I already just pulled out of the other image into build artifacts. Copy in the same configs and whatever else I needed, and there's that entry point again. So if we build this, oh, sorry, got real loud there for a second. Go into Builder and kick. And yes, I could just show you the logs from the times I've been playing with this, but you know what fun is that? Um, fun, fun logs. You'll see this run. And at the end, it should spit out the same kind of information. And I purposely am not deleting the build image just so we can see how big it is. Normally I would. And again, this is the builder pattern. This is not, this is what multi-stage is replacing. Um, just kind of showing you in case you haven't done this before. Come on, this doing the go build right now. And here we go, start, it uh, created that thing, copied the things out, deleted the container, builds the image now. And pushing it up to my repo, and then we're done. So this was builder number 10, which is right here, 161 meg. Same thing at the end, that as far as the user cares about, just doesn't contain all of the cruft from Golang or anything else I didn't need. Uh, if you look at the history, you can see that. So DB and Jesse is basically here, really. 
123 meg for that, because that's what Golang was based on, and I, that's how I know what to use. Um, I just went into the Golang one and looked at what it's from. But then all of these are just the pieces I built on top of it. So we've shrunk down sizably, a lot of, a lot of savings there. So, yay, that's fun. Um, let's talk about the multi-stage now, and we'll see how to do this a lot simpler. So multi-stage, if you haven't looked at it yet, um, allows you to have multiple stages, obviously, in one Docker file. Each stage starts with a new from line. So that thing you're, no you're normally seeing at the top of every Docker file, you can see more of them now. Layers from the final stage, the last from statement to the end, are the only things that are gonna appear in that final image. Stages can also refer back to and copy things from earlier stages. Now, note that this does require, this was added in Docker uh, Community Edition 1705 or newer, or Enterprise Edition 1706 or newer. So you gotta be at least on that version. So, apologize on the back if that's small. I wanted to try to get it on one slide. Uh, you don't really need to read it too much because I'm gonna point things out on it mostly. Uh, this is a multi-stage build of the same doc, uh, Kubernetes Docker craft thing. And you can see five from statements now. That breaks us up into five sections. And you also see, if you can't read that in the back, it says from Alpine 3.5 as wget. This stage is Alpine 3.5, which is pretty much as small as you can get besides using Scratch, which is an empty container. Um, and all it's doing is t making an image called wget that has a few things, CA certificates, wget, and tar. Next, we're using that image in these stages and we're labeling them Docker and Kubernetes. And the last stage, not the last, the fourth stage, is based on Golang, because again, we gotta build it, right? So that one we're labeling as Dockercraft. At the bottom, we have a from DB and Jesse, and you see copy, but a new argument has been added to copy, dash dash from. So we're saying from, the Docker craft label at the path go bin Docker craft, co copy everything there into this stage images bin folder. And the same thing from Docker and from Kubernetes at those paths. So to visualize that, you've got um, your wget container gets built on Alpine, your, come on, go forward, your Docker container has that structure, your Kubernetes has that structure, Docker craft. Um, is based on Golang, and then you got Debian. Oh man, whatever that image is, it just doesn't want to show for me. I'm sorry. It worked on worked on my machine. Um, <laughs> it's hey, it's fr it, it's the end of the conference. Come on, you're gonna have beer in a minute. Don't don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> tell that to myself. Uh, so that my app, it's an invisible container. It's it's transparent. Um, anyway, that container. It's based solely on Debian, and then the artifacts copied in, plus whatever you know, else is in that from package. So when you're all done, these magically go away, and if you were to do a, uh, uh, take a look at what images you've, you're still hanging on to, you have got Alpine and Golang, yeah, that's gonna be in, in your inventory, but my app, based on Debian, is all you're, all you're gonna end up with at the end. There's no containers hanging around from your other builds, anything, and all you had to do is one Docker build, tag, go, that's it. So let's, uh, yeah, um, Minecraft, really? Yeah, so not everyone, as I said, is you know, doing Golang Docker container Minecraft stuff. Um, <laughs> I love that image. <laughs> um, but, that, but yeah, that's life for us, right? We do Minecraft all day long. No, we don't. Um, let's look at something a little more realistic. So at C app is a, if you look at any of the DockerCon videos, we often use this as a, as a kind of an easy example. It's a simple um, Spring Boot Java backend with a React JS front end we deploy in a single container. Not, not too complicated. Um, and I don't even wanna go slides on this, we're just gonna go right into it. So this is at C app, and I'm not gonna bore you with, you know, here's before and here's after. We're just gonna look right at it and uh, see what it looks like in multi-stage. Let me grow that a little bit for you guys in the back. I guess I could hide that. Here we go. So, stage one, node, because React.js needs node to build. 
We're taking the node, and, and yes, if you're in a real shop, you wouldn't use latest. You'd pin this to a version number. Outside of scope, this is a demo, and we want the latest for the demo. We're gonna do a storefront, we're gonna make a storefront image, transient image, based on the latest node. And we're gonna do the things necessary to build this app, which is npm install and, and, and uh, run build after we do this copy, whatever. Then we've got a Maven app, and yes, it's latest, whatever. Uh, we're gonna call this app server, and it's a Maven build. We don't need node for this part of it. So we're going to do the things necessary. And there's some interesting ordering here that's really outside of the scope of this, but just in case you're doing Maven builds in Docker, what they're doing here is they're saying, okay, bring the palm file over, pull the dependencies first, because when you're a developer iteratively going, if you've done Maven Java work, your source is what changes all the time, and you're like build, 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 build. So this pulls all the dependencies, and unless you've changed that POM file, these won't change. So if you know Docker, when you do a build, it'll cache that. So you do another Docker build, you don't have to wait for all those dependencies to be pulled down again. Um, so it's kind of a nice little trick. Anyway, so we're copying everything else in right now, and then we're doing a Maven command that has a goal and an arg of package, skip tests. Yes, we don't skip our tests in CI, but hold that thought. Um, then the final stage is based on Java 8, the Alpine build, as tiny, as tiny as you can get Java JVM down to, but we don't need all the Maven crap, so we, we get rid of that. Um, we're adding a user named Gordon. Do we know why it's Gordon? Who, who knows about Gordon at Docker? Anybody? Ooh, that's a trivia. I may, I maybe I'll have a, a sticker for somebody if they can figure it out. Um, nope, nope. Uh, we'll save it for the end. Uh, Workter, static, all the stuff that they need to build this thing. We're, now we're copying that's from that storefront image what was under the build in the React app folder. That's just the output of the, the, the NPM build, right? And we're going over to the app folder, and we're saying, copy just that jar. That's all I need. And then we've got the entry point, which is run that jar. It must have a jetty in it or something. I don't know. And um, that's it. So let's take a look at what that does when you look at it in Jenkins. Oh, I skipped the Jenkins file. Sorry. Uh, let's look at the Jenkins file first, because that actually matters. So the first thing I'm doing, obviously, checking out. So I've got two stages here. Um, and if I was in a real production, this would run in parallel. I have a parallel around it, but because it's a demo, I don't want to tempt the, the demons. Um, so we're just doing it sequ sequentially. We're going to do our unit tests on our build separately, and there's a reason for this. I'm going to skip unit test and look at the build first, because it's, it's just like what you've already seen. Docker, build, and then ship it, push it up in my repository. That's all we're doing. Back up at the unit test. Now, I care about the unit test. I want to see the JUnit reports, right? And if I just do a Docker build, they're gone. And uh, tests failed, oh, I don't know, maybe. What failed? I don't know, go run on your machine. That doesn't work. So what we're going to do here is a separate, and like I said, normally we do this in parallel, build. But we're going to pass a couple arguments into the build. And I don't know if you've seen this before, but you can pass build args into Docker build. And I've actually got another thing that, that's specific to multi-stage, target. I'm saying, I want to build app server. This is the part of the Docker file I care about. Build app server and set the Maven goal to test and Maven args to the empty string. And if we go back to the Docker file, you'll see normally that's package and skip tests. We don't want package and we don't want skip tests because we're, we're not building the package, we're just testing. So at the same time, in a parallel, at the same time the build's running, this is going to run. When it's done, I'm gonna, I'm just making sure I don't have any cruft in my workspace here. I'm cleaning your workspace probably would be better anyway. Um, then I'm gonna use the, the tests object that that build came with, and I'm gonna jump inside of it here. This is uh, Groovy DSL or uh, Syntax 4, inside this container, or this image, I guess container. Um, sorry, lost my train of thought. Inside this container, run whatever's in this block. I'm going to copy all of my Surefire, which is Maven, where they put the JUnit reports, out of there into app Surefire reports. So this, and the reason we're doing this is because this is in, this is in the, the container. This, that's actually in the image. Is the terminology right? That is a Jenkins volume. It, it, they mount, when Jenkins runs images, it mounts the workspace in so you can get things in and out of it, right? So what I'm saying is get that over there, 
from the image and just copy it so that I can get at it from Jenkins world. Then outside of the container, I say, I'm just spitting it out for my own purposes, but I, I tell JUnit, hey, JUnit, your reports are over there. So now the Jenkins normal JUnit reporting capability can see it. And I know that was long-winded, I just kind of wanted to explain it because that's, people it, it forget that, and then their development leads are like, hey, what happened to my JUnit tests? You need, to, you need to grab them out. So let's go back over to our Jenkins server and look at the at C app, and we're going to hit build on that. And go, Maven, go. I actually like Maven. I shouldn't complain. Not to offend any Gradle guys out there. Gradle's fine. So Gordon. Nobody knows what Gordon is. I'm surprised. Usually, oh, who's Gordon? The He's the turtle, yes. So I, I guess I started at Docker two months ago, and um, so the tests are done. Uh, I, um, as they're walking us around the office, there's this tortoise. I mean, he's like this big, and they've got a huge cage in the back of the cafeteria for him, and they, as we're walking through, it was right before lunch, they were cutting up his lettuce and whatever. Apparently, he started at the company when he was this big. He's somebody's pet, and he's climbing on the keyboards, and the people joke. He's got his own Twitter account, and he's the one who does pull requests and all sorts of stuff. So he's been there ever since. He's got, his, he's got two, he's got one in the, in the cafeteria. I can, I can. I can stretch this out till this is done, uh, <laughs> and we've got we've got a uh, like an outdoor area you can eat that he's got his outdoor, so he gets both his outdoor time and we take care of him well. So if you ever see the cartoon Docker icons and stuff, there's often a turtle one. It's Gordon. Okay, so it is now at the very end where it's pushing that final image up and should spit out the info I want to see. Any second. Yes, yes, I know. There's the one layer that changed. Okay, so, and we don't have a before and after, sorry, on this one, but you can see that we pushed the 210 megabyte image. The tests that I ran, that had 828 megs in it. I don't want that in my image. I don't have it now. And again, I would normally throw this away. I just want, kept it in there to see it. And there's what's in it. So let's take a look at my repository. This is Docker Trusted Re Registry. This is our, our paid registry. You could use any registry you want. You could use Docker Hub, whatever. I'm just using this because I had it. If I go into, let's go back to our Docker Craft examples. And you're gonna see a bunch of builds because you know I've been working on my slides and my demo. The last one we did here, Builder 1010, I'm sorry, Master 105. These are compressed, the, the DTR compresses these down, so this is uh, 309 megabytes when it's compressed. The builder and Docker file versions, that's the newest one, right, are both in the 63 to 64, a little bit of variance there, I'll have to look at that. Uh, and that's interesting, right, we always saw that though, we saw that in the build. What really hit me though when I first looked at this, um, one of the things we can do with DTR is we can scan for uh, uh, CVEs, for, for vulnerabilities in your images. And look at what we've got here. We've got a 309 megabyte image that has 41 critical and 126 major vulnerabilities. Which, you know, this isn't a production app. I'm not, we're not, I'm not worried about what those vulnerabilities are. What's interesting is if you look at the smaller versions, they've only got 13 and 25. Just by ripping all this other stuff out, you've reduced any possible attack surface. If somebody were to get into your container somehow and get at the other files in there, you've reduced the number of things they can do to you just by shrinking that image down. And I didn't even think about that when I was first uh, putting these slides together. That's powerful, and it, 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 even if it's dead code or dead files that aren't being used, if it's available to them, they might find a way to use them. And it, it, this is actually, to me, more important than the size, is, is getting, the, getting it down. Now, of course, if this was a real app, we'd be looking at those 13, and we'd figure out well, what's going wrong. And, um, Again, this isn't a DT, DTR uh, demo. Just we go into all these things and find out, okay, what, why is this? Why is this a vulnerability? We clean it up. But again, by shrinking it down, you reduce your attack surface and you save image size. So uh, resources. Um, a lot of the content you're seeing today came from a uh, culmination of other things that are already out there. Um, 
DockerCon 2017 keynote. Uh, this link, and these slides will be shared. If you follow my Twitter account, which you'll see in a second, I will post my slides later today or tomorrow, and uh, you can get to these. But this is the uh, DockerCon keynote where um, Solomon talks about it. It links right into the part where he starts to talk about this. And if you uh, watch that a few minutes later into it, he'll, he goes into something else. But they go into a nice uh, kind of a campy little video demonstrating it actually in use. And you get to see that's the app running. Um, Abby Fuller is at Amazon Web Services. She also spoke at DockerCon about creating effective images. Um, excellent talk. She goes in, she knows more about large scale image uh, at production and, and Docker at production than a lot of people. So watch that, wonderful video. And also there's a good article out on, um, is this DZone? Yeah, DZone by Nicholas Frankel that talks a lot about Maven-based GitHub projects. So if you are a Maven shop, which a lot of us are, um, using Dockerfile for uh, Maven. And of course, there's DockerCon coming up in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. If you happen to be going to Europe those times, please come join us. I don't know that I'm going because I'm kind of new with the company and they don't want to send me. But uh, DockerCon will be in San Francisco in the spring or early summer next year. And that's what I've got. So what questions do you have? I will try to answer them. Sir. No, I think they did that just because that's the user they wanted to create. Um, I, what he's talking about, so I'm sorry, I didn't repeat the question. The, the question was the Gordon user was an actual, aside from the cuteness and triviality of the name Gordon, is there a reason why they did that user? Um, not being somebody who worked on this exact example, I don't think so, but often it's, it's good to have a separate user to run your uh, Tomcat or Jetty server under anyway. So, but Gordon was just because they wanted to be funny. Anyone else? I'm sorry, the lights make it hard to see. Yes, sir. Oh, sure, absolutely. I'm slide with the links on it. There you go. Oh yeah, that's coming up at the after the QA. Let me let people get shots of this. It's just Eric Smalling, E R I C small I N G. Everyone got this? Anyone else? Maybe. And again. I'll post it to Twitter. Uh, yep. Uh huh. It's exactly the same. Sure. Um, nope. If you if you don't specify, so if you, you remember from the one example, uh, let me get to the right one. In the Jenkins file, for the unit tests, I've passed a target. That will only do the app server target. It'll actually do the ones leading up to it too, because usually you're depending on it. But that says I, I need the app server piece of this. If you omit that, which you normally would, you just say Docker build tag this dot or you know Docker file. Um, it just does all of them in order and throws away those transitive containers or uh, transient containers that were in the in the intermediate builds. So throw them out no, the images, the image layers will still be there and they'll get garbage collected when you do a Docker prune eventually, but the container that was like briefly started up to gather the things that you don't, it gets you, if you look at the Docker output, you'd actually see I'm throwing it away. Exactly, but what it saves you then is you don't have to have a make file or a shell script for your developers to have to know to use or tribal knowledge for them to know to build this, build this, build this. Um, and your Jenkins file, you know, your do again, your Jenkins build and your developer builds become the same thing again. Docker build, done. Let me get back over here. So there's my info. Um, Eric Smalling on Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub. If you're on the Jenkins or Docker free node uh, IRC, I'm often on those. Uh, feel free to contact me. Um, any other questions? These lights are bright. <laughs> okay, well, great. Well, thank you for coming. Um, let's. <laughs> let's